YouTubers, welcome back in to another edition of Astros Recap. Back at it, Sunday night, May 29th, 1041 p.m. 529, 2022, 1041 p.m. Another week in the books for the Astros. They've now played 48 games, so we're getting very close to the one-third uh, point of the season. Uh, getting close there. Astros at 30 and 18. So overall, like the record, uh, this week was another average week, three and three, taking two of three at home against the Guardians, and then losing, dropping two of three to the Mariners over the weekend. So a few things. Uh, the Astros since their 11-game winning streak, sort of back and forth a little bit, haven't really been able to reel off some wins. Um, series. I mean, they've won their fair share. I have to go back and look here, here in a few seconds here. But they lost a series to Boston. Lost a series over the weekend. Of course, took two or three over the uh, over the Rangers. Two or three over, over the Guardians uh, since the losing streak. So yeah, just a little back and forth. Haven't really uh, haven't been bad, but haven't really increased uh, upon their sort of. Uh, the Angels are, fa are falling right now, so we're actually doing pretty good in the division in terms of our uh, lead in the AL West, but uh, as far as just the team overall, just sort of back and forth a little bit. So offense really struggled over the weekend. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. A few things. So uh, talking points, like I talk about every week, talking points here. Um <laughs> So the Guardians, we lost on Monday, and then we were able to bounce back when Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday was an ugly win. No, wait. Wednesday was the ugly win. Tuesday, uh, we had a big uh, outburst of runs. Bregman had a big two-run double. Tucker, I think, had a three-run home run. So uh, really a span of three innings. We scored seven runs, beat them seven to three, I believe, was the final. After dropping uh, Monday's game, Tristan... I think his name's Tristan. Might be wrong. McKenzie uh, really shut them down. Starter for the uh, Guardians there. Uh, very lanky, tall, uh, but very slim. <laughs> I remember seeing this guy pitch against us last year. I thought it was amazing how skinny his arms and just his body was. He's like a two, like I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but he's like a toothpick. But he's like six three. Or 6'5", 165 pounds. So, but he shut him down. Tristan, I want to say Tristan. I feel like I'm, I'm, that's not my, all right. Now it's going to bother me if I don't look at this. So, we're going to look at the official name. We lose this game 6-1. to one. I'm just, I, if, I, if I don't get this name, I said it right. Trist, yeah, Tristan McKenzie. Yeah, he shut him down. So, the yeah, shows no offense and yeah. Luis Garcia was not very good here in this game, giving up five runs or four and five. I don't, I don't know the exact line. wasn't very good. But you bounced back, went seven to three. At a three-inning stretch, they scored two, one, and four. Valdez was good, not perfect, but great. Kept the ERA under three. So Valdez, a guy we need to give a lot of credit to because obviously opening day starter uh, against the Angels – in which he pitched fantastic, had a few rough starts after that, but his last like six or seven have been uh, the best you could hope for. So Valdez is pitching very well. And we've talked about Valdez in the past, last year, obviously the ace in 2020, after he got you know through with the injury and started pitching in 2021, he picked up basically right where he had left off, continued to be the ace, uh, but then the foreign substance, the sunscreen going away, um, messed with him a little bit and can never uh, fully get back on track. But he's looked good this year. I, I think that uh, considering, you know, everything that's transpired over the last few years, for Valdez to pitch the way he is, we've been, uh, I've been very um, happy. Not the word I was looking for, but very uh, satisfied uh, with the way he's performed this year. So there is that to say. Uh, winning this ugly game on Wednesday, 2-1. Two, two sack flies, scored the run. 
Javier was great, uh, bouncing back after his rough outing. Uh, what was it against the? Um, he got lit up. Well, he was good against the Rangers. He pitched against the Rangers last week, and he was good there. But the start before that's where he got sort of rocked in uh, Washington. Uh, but he's yeah. I mean, it, Javier is going to be in this rotation until we get any update on Odorizzi. And we really don't have one in terms of timetable for his return. But, I mean, Javier's pitched uh, as a starter in the past, so should have no issues doing it uh, now. And he's looked good. I mean, ERA is at 2.43, 3-2 in the year. Pitched most of the games out of the bullpen, of course. That's why record doesn't show a whole lot. But, great. Starters, aside from one guy we'll talk about here in a minute, have been good. Um, checking my time. So yeah, winning the series, especially after losing the opener, uh, satisfied with that. Uh, you go in, you know, on the road, off day Thursday, you go into Seattle. Friday and Saturday were pretty bad games. Just quick recaps there for you. Verlander, uh, really his first bad start of the year. If there's one issue we have on Justin Verlander, and, you know, he's been great, obviously, but if there's one thing... And this hasn't bought. This hasn't, you know, really has not been an issue this year to this point. But he is susceptible to giving up the long ball. A lot of those home runs he gives up are solo home runs, so it doesn't kill you. Uh, gave gave up four home runs in this game and was not very good at all. Did get through six innings, but if we look at the line here, uh, Verlander six innings. Six earned runs, four home runs. Struck out six, walked one. ERA goes up to over two at 2.03. It was at 1.22, I think, going into the game. So, did raise. Gets the loss. Okay, I'm not going to freak out over one outing. Uh, Berlander's been great this year. But, yeah, he, he uh, gave up a few two-run home runs. And then I think two... two um, yeah, two solo shots. Uh, Mariners scored all six of the runs at home runs. So, uh, let's see who got him here. I know Julio Rodriguez hit a two-run shot. Um, Kyle Lewis hit a home run. Ty France, an unlikely source, I believe, here with the fourth long ball. Taylor Trammell. I think that's how you say his name. Taylor Trammell, yeah. That's his only home run this year. He's got nine career home runs, so, yeah, unlikely source. Two of those were two-run shots. The other were solos, so. But the Astros also only scored one run, so hard to win a game when you do that. Uh, they got shut out Saturday. Not very good. Jose Urquidy, this is the one guy in the rotation that hasn't pitched very well all year. So, Jose Urquidy just has not really been able to uh, be consistent. He's had some decent starts, but uh, also hasn't been very good. Wasn't good against the Red Sox. Wasn't good here. Early start against the Mariners wasn't good. Uh, his ERA is at 4.80. But 12 hits in four and two-thirds, five earned runs, struck out four, walked two. And then the bullpen cleaned it up a little bit. Abreu gets four outs, walks a guy, strikes out two, clean. Other than that, Phil Maton got two outs, struck out both. Well, now he got through an inning, struck out two. And then Taylor, who comes in and never fails. Uh, the first lefty he'll face, you can almost guarantee a walk. Uh, but he actually got through it, hit, walk, struck out a guy. Uh, luckily got through his outing. At that point, it was six to nothing, whether he gave up runs or not. Uh, that's a spot where you use Blake Taylor, up big, down big, where he can't mess things up. Because he's the one guy in the bullpen I do not trust. Only guy. So, Ashe's bullpen ERA is very good right now. It's like the best in all of baseball. Um, think about this time last year. Their bullpen was one of the worst in all of baseball. Uh, they had nobody other than Ryan Presley and Ryan Stanek was pretty good for about a month and a half last year before he sort of really had some slip-ups. But other than that, everybody else in the bullpen, I mean, it was just bad. 
it was, I mean, it, it was all bad. Didn't matter who it was. They were all, all bad. Um, and James Click did a good, good job at the deadline, adding four guys. One of which we still have, and he's been a very nice surprise in Rafael Montero. But I look at the back end. You, you, our bullpen options are good. If if Dusty Baker does not use Blake Taylor in situations that are important, high leverage, late innings, tight games, I'm almost okay with anybody else you go with. Now, Maton, Phil Maton hasn't been what I'd hoped this year, but Ryan Stanek's been good. Montero's been good. Naris has been good. Presley, I think, is starting to uh, get back into his closer form. So, I mean, I like the options there. Brian Abreu's improved. I have to give him credit. I, I, I really do. Um, I'm not sold on him quite yet. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I don't have the same feeling I used to have when Abreu comes into these games. So I will say that. So when it comes to our bullpen, which plays such a huge role in today's today's game, I, I like it. I like it. I like everybody aside from Blake Taylor. Only guy I do not trust in that bullpen is Blake Taylor. Um, starters all upset aside from Urquidy. Urquidy and Blake Taylor, only two pitchers I do not have faith in these days. I don't think I'll ever, ever have faith in Blake Taylor. He's never shown me anything in his career, which started in 2020, which was a fluke year to begin with. He hasn't shown me anything to prove. Like, Urquidy's shown me more, I feel like. He's had issues staying healthy. Urquidy, to me, has shown me more that tells me he could probably turn his you know, season around a little bit. But uh, Blake Taylor, no, I just don't see it. And... um Unfortunately, he's a lefty, so in today's baseball, you're like required to have at least one lefty in your bullpen, which I think is ridiculous because the Astros did this. I brought this up last week. A uh, few years there, A.J. Hinch, last, last few years, they didn't have a lefty in the bullpen, which was the right decision. It didn't, didn't need a lefty because your lefties weren't good options. And I mean, I think Chris Davinsky was actually called in back when they had Chris Davinsky, to get lefties out because his numbers against lefties were good. Even though he was a right-handed pitcher. So, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, the fact that Brooks Raley remained on the team last year after acquiring Phil Maton and Kendall Graveman and Rafael Montero and Yimi Garcia was a complete joke. It really was. But he's a lefty. Lefties, for some reason, get a free ride since they're more uh, rarity. But if you throw left-handed and you're not good, uh, you'll find a way to make your team on a you'll, you'll feel, find a way to make make a major league roster because you're left-handed. Yeah, that's just how it works, I guess. At least for the Astros standpoint, that's how it works. So I'll never agree with that, but you know, yeah. Um, they win today, not pretty, but take the win any way you can get it. They salvage a the game, so uh, but winning. Two to one, uh, scoring. You know, uh, Jimmy Pena had a solo home run. Luis Garcia was rolling right along, doing fine. But you know, actually it took a no hitter into the uh, sixth inning. I want to say, but gave up a hit, gave up a run. Uh, got through the inning, struggled, labored a little bit, and then in the seventh, he gave up back to back hits. And then Dusty went out and got him, which was the right decision at that point in time. A uh, tie game. I Garcia wanted to stay in. He looked uh, a little upset, but I, I remember telling myself after the second runner got on with a base hit, I said, you need to go get him. Montero, who's well-rested, was warmed up, ready to go. Uh, that was the right move by Dusty to go, go get him right when he did. Uh, Bunt, Zach Bunt, moves the runners to second and third, one out. And then back-to-back -back strikeouts, Montero got out of it and looked real sharp, real good to keep the game tied. Ashes do score after, let's see here if I can think. Maldonado hit a ground rule double. Uh, then they walk. 
let's see here. They walk, they walk a few hitters to load the bases. Alvarez had the big RBI single, proved to be the game winner, but Montero to Neres to Presley. Presley, very shaky in that ninth inning, but did get out of it. Uh, ground ball double play with the bases loaded one out after walking two guys. Didn't really, his, his fastball command was not there today, but got through it and um, uh, salvaged a game. So, 30-18. A's are fall not the A's, the Angels are falling big time right now, as we predicted. <laughs> um, but they've lost, yeah, the, the Angels have lost five in a row. We now have a three-and-a-half game lead. So even though we haven't played great baseball last week, week and a half, they've actually improved or actually uh, widened the gap of the uh, lead in the AL West. So, yeah. And then the uh, Rangers, who lost today, 22-24, and 24, the third-place team, but seven back. So pretty big gap there. But Astros in good shape. Memorial Day tomorrow, so a lot of day baseball. Astros play at 3. I work. I'll get off at 2. I should make, make it home back in time for that. But, yeah. Um, as far as injury goes, uh, minor thing with Kyle Tucker right now. Can't diagnose the injury. Had an MRI. It's not serious. Uh, but he might be out a few days, so we'll wait on that. Another guy. Mauricio, M M M Mauricio Dubon, we brought up on the podcast here previous weeks, has not done a damn thing that, yet this year. So Dubon and Nico Goodrum, uh, people liked, including myself, even though I know nothing about Dubon, uh, but sending Nico Goodrum back to AAA, but Dubon hasn't proven that he's better yet because he really hasn't done anything, unless you want to count the versatility. He's played some center field. Uh, played some infield, but uh, from a hitting standpoint, has done nothing. So I'll be keeping a keeping a close eye on him. Bregman still needs to just play better. Uh, hasn't done a whole lot. I mean, we we've harped uh, not really harp, but uh, that was brought. At, I mean, he's not playing that well. <laughs> just that simple. Uh, he can't hit. Can't hit right now. Um, I wish they'd move him down in the order. Not because it really makes a whole lot of sense. It's more of a punishment uh, sort of thing for me. But I want to just look at this real quick. Bregman's hitting 235. Your three hitter's hitting 235. Yeah. That's not good enough. Sorry. Guriel's also been terrible. 222. Dubon at 222. Paying you 290 actually leads all hitters, I think, an average right now. So Pena has been good. Altuve has raised the average up back to regular Altuve. Brantley's going to hit 275, 300 the entire year. He's at 280. Alvarez 253. That could be better, but he does bop a lot of home runs. Had the big game winning RBI single today. Uh, Siri 220. Moldomato is just a disgrace 123. Diaz at 213, Castro 114, all played today. So those your average update thus far. Could be better. Offense all around could be better. Uh, they go to Oakland tomorrow afternoon, Memorial Day game. Have not played Oakland all year, so it's been a while. Uh, still got to play them 19 times, so we'll, we'll probably see a lot of Oakland coming up on the schedule. But they are last in the division, so this is another series where it should be sort of taking care of business Getting wins, Valdez will be pitching, so see how that goes. Hopefully well, but they'll play Oakland. I think they stay out on the road after that, and they go to Colorado? No, Kansas City. I don't think they play Colorado this year. But, yeah, Oakland for three, day off Thursday, Kansas City for three. That'll wrap up the road trip, but I'm going to wrap things up there. Talking points, talking points, talking points. <laughs> Love to hear your thoughts. Comment section below. Like the video. Share it with your friends. All that good stuff on YouTube. I'll talk to you next Sunday, which will be June the 5th. Almost 100% guarantee then. We'll see you then.